Hey guys, what's happening? It's Jake here from JTS Cosplay back with another video. Today I'm going to be explaining and outlining how I'm going to tackle this Herod cosplay. Um, and if you don't know that I am doing this cosplay, it is a World of Warcraft character that has been awesomely redesigned by Zach Fisher. Um, I think he's Zach Fisher Art on Instagram, but I will link his Instagram in the description. But uh, he has put together this awesome redesign of this character and I really want to cosplay it. So I am going to cosplay it. And in this video, I'm just going to tell you how I am going to go about doing all the different parts in foam, 3D printed, LEDs, um, all the fabric work. I'm just going to outline how I am going to use all those materials and what I'm going to use for what. So without me rambling on a bit too much like I always do, um, let's just get to it. I'm going to send you over to my computer screen so I'm going to be able to show you a lot more um, on that. So let's just get to it. So first off guys, I'm just going to show you a full picture of Herod, um, the old blood champion by Zach Fisher, the redesign of course. Uh, so pretty much that's how it is. I'm going to have to do some body paint. Uh, which I haven't sourced yet, so I'm just going to probably look at that towards the end. But first off, I'm just want to, well, second off, I guess now, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to prepare uh, to scale the armor right and just so make it proportionate because everything really relates to proportions for a costume like this because if one thing is too big or one thing is too small, it's going to look off completely. So what you do get when you do... Um, by the HD pack from Zach Fisher. I think it's on Gumroad. Once again, I'll put the link in the description. But you get the line art version. So this is the line art, which I have already scaled to my height um, and my size. So it's pretty much scaled to me. I just need to get it printed, which I can do at Officeworks, which is like a, a local um, office supply store that do printing. So I will be doing that and then I will be having proper scale for everything when I start to build things out of foam and 3D printing. So talking about foam and 3D printing, they're going to be the two main materials I use. And if you're wondering what these blue lines are, um, that's what I'm getting 3D printed. So these have been sent to a 3D modeler that I have asked to model these for me so I can print them for 3D printing. So we have the helmet here, which I'm going to get the horns 3D modeled separately so I can put them in through magnets or some sort of closure so it's going to be easier for transporting plus printing. And then I'm just only getting one of these horns 3D modeled as I can mold and cast that and have three. So that's it for the upper sort of body part. And then we have the midsection. So on the gauntlets or braces or whatever you want to call them, I have this little gemstone piece on the left. Um, I'm getting the gem separately so I can mold and cast that in a translucent resin and then for this This sort of skull here that's on the belt. I am getting that printed as I mean modeled as well and I'm gonna get the horns um, The horns separately as well. So that's just gonna make these pieces way easier for me um, Anything that I am getting printed is just I don't think I can probably get that much detail um, From foam because I'm not the greatest at foam, but um, 3d printing. I'm not too bad at so, so that's it for that midsection. And then we have the shins and the boots. So we have this skull here. Once again, I'm going to get the horn separate. And then this piece here. Once again, I'm going to get the gem separate as well. And then we have the boot pieces. So these pieces to me probably be a bit hard in foam. They probably get a bit wrecked up in foam. So I'm going to print them really strong. And then I'm just going to attach them with sort of Velcro or something. So, but while we're down here, I'll just explain that um, the boots. So I'm just going to be using my old Superboy boots that I don't need anymore. And they're going to be mostly covered anyway. I'll just weather them up a bit. And that way I can add uh, some Velcro and permanent attaching for these. So they don't have any room to move around. So next is the axe. So this thing is huge. If I go back to here, look how big that is compared to that. So this is going to be a big build for me. I'm super excited. This is probably going to be the first part in the um, YouTube series, the first video after this one. Uh, so what I'm planning on doing is getting this part printed, making the rest out of foam, layered foam, 
and then sort of carving out the detail and all the like edges and same with the handle i'm just going to use sort of pvc pipe and i'm definitely going to cut it up into a few pieces and try and make it as hidden as possible just for storage and for transport because i really want to go to uh interstate cons with this costume So if you're wondering also, all these parts here that have LEDs, so like the helmets, the, the shoulder piece here, all the gems and the, all the skulls, uh, they're all lit up. So what I'm going to do is definitely incorporate LEDs. I really want to go that one step sort of further and, you know, make it look a bit more real. So that's going to be pretty fun to explore. I'm, I have... Uh, used LEDs before but um, it is it is like a bit limited I guess but on that um, my first thing I'll show you what I'm buying thanks to Jessica Negri for the idea it's these fairy lights that are party copper wire string lights um, and they come with like however many LEDs you want so I'll just quickly go back and forth from here so this one is 10 meters 100 LEDs so you have 10 meters of this wire and what she does is she sort of it's going to be hard to explain this but she sort of wraps it around each um led so they're super close and it's like a concentrated concentrated uh, light source so that's what i'm planning on doing for this shoulder here i'm going to have a hundred there it's just stupid not to because it's so cheap um to get a hundred compared to like 50 or 60 or something like that so that's an nine dollars 25 and then we have the one meter 10 led which i think will be enough for the uh just like the pieces on the uh, gauntlets here the braces because that's only light source so two of them um and then we have the 50 led five meters so i've gone for 50 for the axe because it's pretty big and obviously it's going to be on the other side pretty much flipped so i'm going to need 25 for each skull which i i think will be enough and then lastly i have 20 led i have four of those so that's going to go here on the shin here on this shin one on this skull and one for the helmet so that should be enough i think because i'm only going to need like one or two for the eyes and then i can use the rest on the uh, skull up top so in total i'm only going to be spending 39 dollars in leds which isn't too bad um if i were to buy pre-wired leds and battery packs i'd probably have to spend more than that or maybe the same but i'd have to spend time so this is awesome they come pre-wired with battery packs and everything obviously batteries not included but this is only provided it works uh, hopefully it does work it works for just can agree so it's gonna have to go back and watch that video to make sure i do it right and um don't stuff it up so that's everything i'm getting off ebay so let's go here so foam is going to be a big part so we have this big shoulder piece um the scales i plan on using foam for the uh, the shins uh, the gauntlets the axe like i said and a few other parts that I already have foam for, which is all right. So like the belts, which I'm going to wrap in pleather, a brown pleather. And then I'm probably going to model and 3D print the buckles and that for myself and just make them fake, um, non-functional buckles. So I can just Velcro things and make it easier. I'll use snaps. I'm not too sure yet. I'll have to wait till armor is made. So for all the foam, I do have a bit of foam at the moment, but I wanted to get some special stuff from Lumen's workshop. So they do all specialized sort of cosplay like supplies, foam, all that sort of good stuff. So I placed this order yesterday. Uh, it is first one's EVA foam scales styled to 100 packs. So I'm going to be using these for these sort of scales. So what I'm going to do is heat them up and pinch them so they have that hard ridge. And then I'm just going to paint them silver and use that for those. I think that will work fine. And so that's for that, the foam scales. Let's just zoom back out here. Okay, so... And then we have the foam, the form light EVA foam 100 by 110 mil. That's for the axe, so I can sandwich those. Plus, it is that's what I is my choice for um, what's it called? Priming foam and making sure it has a good underlayer for paint. I seem to find that this works well, especially using some of the techniques I've seen of other cosplayers on YouTube. And then this is the really cool part. So you see these parts here on the shoulder, oops, on the shoulder where it is a beveled edge. So say like here, this edge, this edge, this edge, or even on this edge. That's just going to make my life so much easier just gluing on a beveled edge already made on there. So I got the 30 mil one for that. And then for this little bevel edge on here, I think I got the 10 mil. So that's only for like the gauntlets, um, just these parts, because these parts I'm going to have to make special, I think. 
um, and I think a little bit here. Oh no, these will take the these shin pieces will take the 30 mil, and then down here on these little boot pieces that will only take the 10 mil. So I ordered two meters of the 10 mil and three of the 30 mil. Okay, so and then I have this form light EVA foam 100 by 108 millimeters thick and that will be for pretty much just all these shoulder parts and so this part here and this part here I'm super excited to make these but they're going to need to keep their shape because they're going to be a bit bulky so I think that this sort of thick foam will hold its shape a lot better than something thinner and it's going to look a lot more sturdy I think so I'm super excited to use that I used to use stuff like that um, that thickness when I built my Iron Man suit so that was a long time ago but this stuff is a lot better because it's actually sort of made for this stuff so that's pretty much it on the sort of big armor sort of stuff like the belt like that like i said all these belts here especially this one too i'm going to make out of foam and then wrap that in a pleather um and then same with this one just a different color and then obviously put that 3d printed part on there i think i can make these out of foam or either print that and then mold and cast that and just make one for go all around the belt and then these pieces here, which are sort of, I don't know, like under wraps for the gauntlets. I'm just going to make sort of a foam, a real small, I mean, a real thin foam piece that will wrap around my arm and then glue like little strips of foam on top of that to give that illusion, wrap that around my arm, Velcro it. And then I guess oh, for gloves, I'm just going to use standard gloves. I'm going to make these knuckle pieces out of foam uh, and just spray them with some silver. If you can see, it's a bit hard to see, but there's like a little rag under behind those scales, which I will make out of, so they're either the brown pleather or a brown fabric. I'm not too sure. That sort of looks like the pleather, but not, but it might match nicely. So I might go with that and weather that up. And then if you're wondering what this sort of skirt karma thing is, don't worry. I'm wondering too. That's going to be interesting to make. I'm not too good with fabric, but um, I'm excited to tackle it. It's going to be something... I guess sort of new but should be cool looking once it's done it looks pretty sick on him um but yeah so that same fabric that i get for this red sort of karma thing here um skirt whatever thigh skirt whatever you want to call it i'm going to use and wrap the handle of this foam axe that i'm going to make so that's pretty much it i think guys i'm super excited to be doing this project um, it's going to be a super fun build, you know, using phone and 3D printed parts and LEDs and sort of belts and strapping. It's going to be a super cool project and it's going to move a lot faster than in my sort of flash is because that's re relying on a printer to just constantly be printing and then sanding, which takes a lot longer time than making foam sort of props and stuff like that um, in finishing wise. So like I said guys, for the first video on this YouTube series, I'm going to be focusing on the axe, which I think will be super fun. Um, I'm just about to order these LEDs. I've made my Lumens Workshop order for my phone. And I just got to get my line art printed. So everything is full steam ahead. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to get this done. And then we're ready to go. So if you do want to see the YouTube series for this, guys, definitely hit subscribe. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video or it's going to help you, I hope it does help you in the future sort of plan out your builds a bit. And even if you aren't getting things 3D printed, maybe circle things that, say, use a different color for foam or for, yeah, like warbler or something like that. So you can write it all down and put a key down. But for this, I just wanted to circle it because it's pretty simple and I had to send it to a 3D modeler. But yeah, it's super helpful, guys, to sort of plan out a build so you know what you're up against for cost, for um, building, and how much sort of time it's going to take, and you can plan it out really well. So yeah, I hope you guys took something from it. If you did, and you did like the video, definitely think about giving a like. And once again, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.